So now let's have a look at the next topic in this chapter, that's evolution and classification. So in grade 9, if we recall whatever we have done last year in diversity in living organisms in biology, we saw that classification has a particular procedure to be followed. When we are classifying organisms, which we do for ease of study, which we do for, you know, putting different organisms with similar characteristics in same groups, when we are performing this activity of classification, we have to follow some basic rules. And there is a step-by-step -step classification process where we consider different factors stage by stage and then stage by stage classify organisms. Similarly, evolution is somewhat studied, the relations of evolution are somewhat studied on the similar grounds. So if we now remember that how we used to classify organisms, we will see that there were four main factors which we took into consideration. The first was type of the cell, Right? The type of the cell which the organism had. Obviously, this is something very common. And we see whether it is eukaryotic or prokaryotic. And then, once that's done, we move on to the next factor. Next factor, next basis of classification. That is the number of cells. Okay, so if it's a unicellular or multicellular organism. The next factor which we take into consideration after taking the number of cells is the mode of the nutrition. Mode of nutrition. So whether it's autotrophic. Or heterotrophic. And the next last basis which we consider is body organization. So the different organs of the body, different parts of the body, how complex they are, etc. etc. Okay, so these are the different factors we take into consideration for classification, if you remember. So when we determine evolutionary relationships. Right, when we determine evolutionary relationships between organisms, whether they are closely related, evolutionary, uh, you know, they have closely evolved, etc., etc. When we look at these aspects, we take into consideration the similar basis. Right? So a similar basis is considered. We look at the type of the cells and the number of cells and mode of nutrition and body organization. If there is a similarity in these between two organisms, we obviously say that they are closely related. And if they have less similarity, well, they are less closely related. And if they have no similarity at all, most probably they are not related to each other. So hence we can uh, conclude that classification and evolution both can be interconnected. If we can classify organisms, it can help us study evolutionary relationships as well. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye. And please look up to the next video, the next part in the description below. Bye-bye.